Here in 1.5, we're going to go over negative exponents. Now, a negative exponent needs to be understood as having the power to move the entire factor around the inverse. And what that means in general is that you can move it up and below, up and down from the, the fraction bar. Now, let me see, let me explain what I mean. Now, if I write 7 to the power of 3, or of negative 3, there are a number of things I didn't write. I did not write a decimal point, which, if you're curious, goes here. I did not write any numbers in the tens place or the hundreds place. You know, even though those are zeros, I did not bother to write it. And I also did not bother to write a fraction bar. And because 7 is our numerator, and if we have a numerator, that means we have to have a denominator. What goes in our denominator? Well, if nothing's there, a 1 goes there. So what does this negative exponent do? The negative exponent is kind of like a, a bus ticket of sorts. It just tells you to move. The 7, along with this exponent, can move to the other side of the division bar. So we end up with 7 to the power of 3, and 3 is now positive. And we have nothing up top. If there's nothing in the numerator, well, we can put a 1 there. That's not the same one as this one here. We can include the 1 here and put times 1, because you, that 1 was there to begin with. And this 7 to the power of 3 just moved in. But writing the times 1 is redundant. And it's, again, one of those things in math that we avoid doing if it's necessary, because 1 times 7 to the power of 3 is equal to 7 to the power of 3. So a to the power of 4. Well, that's the same as a to the power oh, sorry, negative 4 a to the power of negative 4. That's the same as saying a to the power of negative 4 over 1. So now, because a has a negative exponent, it's going to move. So we end up with 1 over a to the 4th. Problems 2a and b, the instructions are to, I'm sorry, well, example 2, uh, portion a and b, our instructions are to evaluate. So evaluate means that we must multiply things out until we actually get to a, a number as best we can. Sometimes there's um, values that we don't know. So 5, 2 of negative 4, that's right there over here is the same as saying 5 to negative 4 over 1 because the 5 has a negative exponent it's got to go so we end up with 1 over 5 to the power of 4 and from there we use what we learned in previous lessons about exponents the 1 stays the same and the 5 to the 4 is the same as 5 times 5 times 5 times 5 and that should be 1 times 25 over 25, which would be, let's see, 25 times 25. I have a feeling it's 625, but it might be bigger. So 5 times 5 is 5, 2, 10, 12, 0, 2, 5. Nope, sorry trying to do this too quickly. That's how mistakes are made. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times 2 is 4 plus 1. I was right. It was 625.
So for this next question, we're trying to solve negative 3 to the power of negative 5. So this is equal to saying negative 3 to the power of negative 5 over 1. And because that is all put, all that has a negative exponent, it's going to be moved. So we are left with 1 over negative 3 to the power of 5. So one, that would give us one, negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3 times negative 3. Let's see. These two here will give us positive 9. Negative times negative is a positive. These two here will also give us positive 9. This one will come down as negative 3. Positive 9 times positive 9 is 81 times negative 3. And that should give us 24, 3, because 8 times 3 is 24, 3 times 1 is 3, and that would be a negative. So our answer would be negative 1 over 243. You could put the negative in front of the fraction bar with the negative 1 or with the negative or with the, the 243. Make sure it's there. Okay. Example 3. Right as a negative exponent. Oh, thank goodness, I didn't. I mean, oh no, I really wanted to multiply 6 5 times. So, 1 over 6 to the 5. If they're asking us to write this as a negative exponent, we just do the reverse of what we've been doing before. We just take our friend there and move him up to the top. Hello, friend. Good to see you. And that would be the same as 6 to the negative 5. Now this might sound a little redundant, but um, it makes it so that you can choose how you're going to get rid of factors, either by subtracting or adding, depending on how you want to express uh, a certain value. This is where... You come in as a mathematician making judgments about how you want things shown. Now, x, so x to the power of 3 times x to the power of 5. There's two ways. So let me try to explain what I'm saying. There can be two ways to solve this. I can say x to the negative 3 and the 5 and just combine them using addition. And I can say negative 3 plus 5. And I can get x squared. Or I could choose to I can choose to say that this negative three needs to be moved to the denominator because it's a negative sign. So I would end up with x to the five over x to the three. And when it's expressed like this, I can say, well, if I have 5x is up here, and 3x is down here, I just subtract 5 minus 3. That's equal to x over 5, I mean x to the power of 5 minus 3, which equals x squared. So I get the same answer, even because I, ch even though I chose two different ways to work with the negative exponent, it's valid either way. And that's what we're trying to teach you, just how to work with negative exponents so that they can be part of your mathematical vocabulary. So for part B, let's just do this um, 
Um, we can do well. We can choose to do this a couple of ways. I can just say that because um, this is already in fraction form, I can use a quotient rule and say that this exponent gets subtracted by that exponent, which is to say w to the negative five minus negative seven. So even though this is already negative, I can't just say uh, sub minus seven. It's minus whatever's here, so minus negative seven. So the negative and the negative give us a positive, so I end up with negative 5 plus 7. Since 7 is greater than 5, I have w squared. Alternately, because why not, if I chose to flip both of these because they're negative exponents, I would have ended up with w to the power of 7 over w to the power of 5, which will be a quotient rule, so this minus that. So w of 7 minus 5 equals w squared. Same answer, same answer. So one point, questions 1 through 3, write with a positive exponent. I will solve one of these and the rest are up to you. Let's go with problem two, six to the negative three. Well, because it's a negative exponent, I'm going to move it to the bottom of its denom um, to the denominator. So the answer would be one to the power, I mean one over, 6 to the power of 3. Right. Good luck with uh, problems 1 and 3. Problems 4 through 6 are asking to evaluate. So I will do problem 4. 7 to the power of negative 2. So 7 to the power of negative 2 which is the same as 7 to the power of negative 2 over 1, because anything can be put over 1 if nothing is written there. Move that to the bottom. And now I have 1 over 7 squared. 7 squared is 49, and the 1 stays the same. Okay. Problems 7 through 9 ask us to write using a negative exponent. Oh, same idea as before. I just take whatever I'm being asked to move around. So 5 to the 7 is moved to the top. And the 7 is turned positive. I'm sorry, turned negative, seeing how we're moving it. So the final answer is 5 to the power of negative 7. Problems 10 through 12, we're going to evaluate these. We're going to write these using positive exponents. So 4 to the negative 2 times 4 to the negative 4. Because these are both um, on the numerator, I'm just going to work with them as is using um, the power of multiple, or using the multiplicative rule. 4 to the negative 2, addition rule, I think, plus negative 4. There, so if I have minus 2, and then I'm just taking away 4 from it, you could just say that. That gives me 4 to the negative 6. That's still a negative exponent, so now all I have to do is remember that that is, that there is a denominator, that is, and I can move anything with a negative exponent to that denominator. 
So I am left with one to the power or one over four to the power of six.